Let's talk about tokenism. I know you're already uncomfortable, aren't you? I know, I'm a little uncomfortable too. <laughs> but here's the thing, almost every uh, client that I work with, this issue comes up about tokenism. And I wanna share just a couple of things. Let me say this, that what I'm gonna share with you in this communication is just scratching the surface about uh, what could be said about tokenism. But I just wanna give you just a little bit of framework that you can start to think through as you are developing your own thoughts around how to stay out of tokenism. The only time that anybody leans into tokenism is when you approach a situation sort of like this. Hey, we need some more fill in the blank around here. And that sounds a little strange, right? But think about that. You look at a team or somebody around you looks at a team or your, your senior leader looks at the team and says, hey, we really need a black guy. Okay. Hey, you know what we really need around here? Some more Korean people. You know what would be awesome for our next leader? A woman. And that's the extent of the conversation. That is how you tokenize people. <laughs> Because, see, here's the thing. If that is the only place or if that is where the conversation or the language stops is only based on someone's color, only based on someone's culture, only based on someone's come from, someone's gender, someone's sexual orientation, no matter what it is, if it stops there, it means that is the only thing that you are looking at when it comes to engaging with people when it comes to recruiting, when it comes to hiring, uh, when it comes to building a volunteer team, whatever your situation is, if the language is only around these characteristics, it's gonna be very easy for you to tokenize somebody. If you're part of the minority culture, don't think that you can't tokenize people too. If you're making the same uh, argument or the same statement about, hey, it would be really great if we had some white people on the team, that is just as much tokenism as anything else. So how do you stay out of tokenism? The first thing is see people as whole people. It's not a bad thing to look at your team or to look at your organization and ask the question, who's missing? That feels like a better question, doesn't it? It feels better than the statement, how do we get some more of fill in the blank around here, right? But when we Step back and look at the question, who's missing in our life? Who's missing in our organization? Who's missing on our teams? That helps us to see people as whole people. It's okay for you to look at a team and say, you know, we're all monocultural around here. Maybe we're all unicolored and we need more people. But why do you need more people? Why do you need someone from a different culture? Why do you need someone from a, from a different come from? The reality is, is that these descriptors that I mentioned are only part of what makes someone awesome. It's a significant part, but it's only part. It's only part of what makes them a complete human. And so they have a different cultural come from and they are skilled and gifted <laughs> in what we need them to do and how they need to fill a function on our teams. Right? We need to continue to see people as whole people. Their cultural come from, their socioeconomic come from, their gender come from, whatever it is, it's just icing on the cake to make our teams even that much stronger. So see people as a whole person. That's the first thing I wanna offer. The second thing I wanna offer to you is share stories. Share stories about the people that are on your teams and that work in your organization. Share stories even just from your individual life, uh, on your social media feeds, anything. Just share stories about the people that are around you. That again, helps people be seen as whole people and not just caricatures for culture or caricatures for gender or whatever it is. Make sure that you share stories. Here's another thing to consider. Set the context. Set 
context in your organization. Set context on your teams for why things may be changing culturally. Set context for why you are making additions to your policies. Or set context to why you are making some changes to how you communicate, things that you are adding. Make sure that you set context. Remember before we talked about anchoring? We talked about anchoring things to a multicultural vision, mission, value system. Do the same thing here. Set the context of why you are making changes and decisions the way that you are. That will help these people that are coming into your teams. This will help you as you are the one communicating about the new culture change in your organization or in your life. Set the context. And here's the last thing I want to offer for you. Deepen your relationships. How do you stay out of tokenism? Deepen your relationships. The more that you move towards less transactional and more relational in your diverse friendships, diverse colleague relationships, the more that you find out about people, see what's common, see the things that are different, the more your relationships will deepen and the less you will be tempted, no matter what your role is, the less you will be tempted to just tokenize people. Look, I wanna tell you this around tokenism. The changes that you seek to make in your life and in your organization is a much higher calling. It's a much higher purpose than just, hey, we need some fill in the blank people around here. Trust me on this. You're doing work that is more important than just a fill in the blank kind of work. So lean in and see people as whole people.